Even now, I've turned 30, I sometimes dream about something. I had the same dream again tonight. I know this is just a dream. In the dream, it happened in a high school hallway during break time. I was goofing around with my friends. The one passing by was my rival, the only one I couldn't beat in grades or character. I'm responding to a classmate who approaches me with a gentle expression. His confident demeanor was annoying. My friend took advantage of my distraction with her and tripped me up, saying gotcha. As I was about to fall, I reflexively grabbed something. It was a sensation like nothing I'd ever felt before. It was soft, warm, and too big to fit in my hand. It took me a few seconds to realize what I had grabbed was her. Well, it was her boob. I am sorry. I apologized hurriedly, but she calmly said, It's not worth an apology. I'm still curious about the meaning of her words. That's why I keep having this dream. I let out a small sigh as I woke up to the alarm clock. My name is David Miller, and I'm turning 30 this year. I got a job at a well-known company right after graduating from university. I was assigned to the system management department. It's a department that takes on the entire system management for the company. The work is rewarding, and I also got a beautiful girlfriend. My perfect life isn't something that just started recently. I was perfect from the moment I was born. Born into an old family, I was raised without any hardship. From the time I became aware of the world around me, I was told that I was handsome, excellent in school, athletic, and tall. Throughout elementary and middle school, I was hailed as a prodigy. It can be helped that I misunderstood that I was highly competent because of how I was raised. In fact, I was a person with no faults. However, a turning point came when I entered high school. For the first time, I met someone who I might lose to. She is the honor student, Fergal. She was excellent not only academically but also athletically. The big difference between her and me was her popularity. Unlike me, who was immature in character, she was already complete. There was hardly anyone who disliked her in school. She always had a gentle expression on her face. I was not good at her. Her name was Ashley Brown. She always had her shoulder-length hair tied back. I still vividly remember the pleasant smell of her shampoo whenever she walked by. When I found out she was applying to the same college as me, my competitive spirit ignited like never before. The college we were aspiring to was among the most challenging. I swore to myself that I would make up for all the times I'd lost in the past right here. Swearing to myself, I hit the books like never before. I was so relentless in my studies, not allowing myself a single mistake, that my parents would worry and suggest, how about taking a break? Once, she spoke to me after she found out we were applying to the same college. David, I heard you're applying to the same college. Let's do this together, she said. I felt embarrassed when she flashed me her sparkling smile. She said she brought some candy and left a strawberry-flavored one on my desk before she returned to her own seat and looked out the window. There was a hint of melancholy on her side profile. I think this was about three days before the exam. On the day of the exam, I searched for her at the test center. Since we had all applied together from school, our candidate numbers should have been close. Proof of this was that my other friends had close candidate numbers. The seat three in front of me was empty. It was probably her seat. At first, I thought she was just running late. I was so concerned about her empty seat that, honestly, I couldn't concentrate on the exam. As a result, I couldn't focus on the exam, and my college entrance exam ended. Of course, I passed. My desperate study for the entrance exam didn't let me down. But I felt betrayed by something more important. I never saw her again after that. She didn't show up at the graduation ceremony either. There were rumors that her father's company had been scammed and gone bankrupt. Apparently, they had left town in the dead of night, almost like they were on the run. She couldn't even think about the college entrance exam. She must have noticed the situation of her family. I think the melancholy on her face as she looked out the window was because she knew that her happy student life was ending. Our paths would never cross again. I remember feeling incredibly lonely after the graduation ceremony, looking at her empty seat where no one sat. My life as a working adult has been smooth sailing. I stood head and shoulders above my peers and kept getting promoted. It felt easier than my student days, almost like a game. There was no one in the company who could compete with me. I think that's why I grew into an adult who completely took life for granted. I also got a girlfriend, Lily, known as the most beautiful woman in the office. 
She joined the company two years after me. From the moment I first saw her, I decided that she was the one for me. I would her on the day of the welcome party for the new employees, and we quickly started dating. I'm thinking of getting married in the future, but lately she's been pressuring me to get married, and I'm a bit taken aback. Around this time, it was decided that the company's system would be completely revamped. After a series of competitive presentations, we finally decided on who we would hire to set up our system. It was not a large corporation, but a small IT company. Though small, the company outshined its competitors in their presentation. Apparently, they have a real hotshot engineer. The representative of the company, a man named Stanley, showed up for our first meeting. He was a rather attractive man with a cool vibe, so much so that the women in our team were quite smitten, and the guy was good at his job. During the meeting, I was constantly amazed at how fast he could think. He said he would bring the person in charge for the next meeting, and that was the end of our first encounter. I assumed the person in charge would be the ACE system engineer. I was excited to meet this person. They were apparently the same age as me, 30. I was excited, feeling like I was about to meet a worthy rival after a long time. The excitement was the same kind I felt when I was competing with Ashley Brown during our college days. When I saw who was coming to the meeting that I had been waiting for, I was so surprised I thought my jaw was going to drop. I'm the person in charge, Ashley Brown. The person who showed up at the second meeting was her, the one who disappeared on the day of our college entrance exam. There was still a resemblance, but she was not the honor student she used to be. Her very short hair was dyed silver, and there were several piercings. The calm, gentle expression that was always on her face was gone. Oh, hi, Miller. I'm in charge of system management. We greeted each other as if we were meeting for the first time. When I handed her my business card, she took it politely. I don't have a business card because I'm a contractor. I'm sorry. Apparently, she was not a full-time employee. She introduced herself as a freelance system engineer. Stanley had asked her to work at his company. The meeting went unbelievably smoothly. She presented a flawless system proposal, and I couldn't find anything to question. Above all, her explanations were concise and easy to understand, appealing to people's senses. Even the bosses who weren't familiar with the system could understand everything from her explanation, so I didn't need to add any. It was a meeting that would usually take twice as long, but it ended before we knew it. Stanley always said that shorter meetings were better. After confirming a few points about future meetings with Stanley, we called it a day. As Ashley was packing up her laptop, I gathered up my courage to speak to her. I was nervous, thinking, what if I was mistaken? Do you remember me? I asked. At my words, she seemed to smile a bit. I remember. You've done well, David. I heard you're in charge of the system. The last time we exchanged words was back in high school, and it felt strange to be talking to her again as adults. What have you been up to since then? You gave up on your exam too. My words came out more accusatory than I intended. This was my only acknowledged rival. Her sudden disappearance left me feeling betrayed, and I couldn't shake that off. It was a story from more than ten years ago. Surely she must be annoyed being blamed for something so far back. Just as I expected, she knitted her brows with a look of annoyance. It was a facial expression I'd never seen before. What I've been up to since then is none of your business, isn't it, David? You really have no tact. I was infuriated by her dismissive tone. What the hell? The nerve of you. I'm just worried about you. I unintentionally raised my voice. Is something wrong? Mr. Stanley approached. I didn't know what to say. What do you want to know, Miller? about my college situation. I couldn't go. I didn't even graduate high school. My highest level of education is middle school. Is that what you wanted to know? I don't need your concern. Don't make fun of me. She glared at me as she stated this clearly. The person I've cared about so much is a middle school dropout. I couldn't accept this reality at once. She was the only one I considered a rival. To be honest, there was even a part of me that admired her. Don't be ridiculous, Ashley. You've hit rock bottom like that. I knew my words were childish, but all I could do was berate and belittle her education. Nonsense. You just have to work your way up with your abilities. Her words left me dumbfounded. I felt like I'd been hit back. It was as if my narrow-mindedness was being held up in front of me. 
While I was at a loss for words, she left the meeting room quickly. I could see Mr. Stanley whispering something to her. Her slender arm was briefly wrapped around Mr. Stanley's waist in response. Their natural interaction suggested that their relationship was more than just temp and employee. The Ashley Brown I knew no longer existed. In addition to feeling lonely, a strange sense of despair engulfed me. I realized that I had idealized Ashley. Meanwhile, despite my relationship with Ashley, the project was proceeding smoothly. I was gradually getting used to the fact that she was not the person I had idealized. In fact, everything went smoothly with her. She seemed to understand everything I was thinking, and she constantly met my expectations. It felt as if we had been together for many years. Hey, are you listening to me? Lily was pouting in dissatisfaction next to me. It seemed I had been absent-mindedly recalling something about Ashley during our cafe date on our day off. Honestly, I wasn't listening to Lily at all. Sorry, I'm just a bit tired from work. I tried to make an innocent excuse with a smile. Lily puffed her cheeks, looking displeased. Humph. Lily, who can be a little selfish, dislikes being put in second place. She's the type that won't be satisfied unless she is the top priority. I used to find that adorable, but today it's not charming at all. Hey, about that temp girl, the shady one with silver hair. I heard she dropped out of high school, lol. Lily chuckled with a snobbish smirk. It seemed to be rumored in the office. I've even had co-workers question whether it's okay to trust the main system to a high school dropout. Each time I had to hold back my rising anger. I never thought that my girlfriend would say the same thing. It doesn't really matter once you're in the real world, right? If you've got the talent and the skills, that's what matters, I retorted. I had no intention of defending Ashley, but it came out sounding like I was. Lily didn't like that. She didn't like that I disagreed with her opinion. What? Have you been charmed by her too, David? Weren't you the one saying anyone without a college degree is trash at the company? Come to think of it, there was a time when I said something like that. Now I realize how arrogant and foolish I was. In fact, high school dropout Ashley is still a few steps ahead of me. Apparently, she even dated Stanley. She eats men up and throws them away at her assignments. Oh. I couldn't hold back my anger at Lily's contemptuous remarks. What the hell do you know about Ashley? You happily spreading such vulgar rumors, you're the worst. I snapped. Normally, I don't raise my voice. Lily was taken aback. We rarely had fights since we started dating, but I just couldn't stand it when Lily made fun of Ashley. Why do I have to be scolded? Did I say something wrong? Lily's face teed and glaring at me looked disgustingly ugly. She might have not meant to be bad. I probably shared the same mindset with her all along. Sorry to interrupt, isn't it a waste of time to fight over me? Suddenly, we were surprised by Ashley's voice coming from behind. She seemed to have been working at the cafe counter. She had her hoodie up, so I didn't notice Ashley at all. Come to think of it, this cafe is near Ashley's workplace. We were the ones stepping into Ashley's territory. I just told the truth. I didn't do anything wrong. Lily glared at Ashley and, shouting, she bolted from the cafe. All I could do was watch Lily's back as she left, abandoned in the cafe. Ashley moved over to my table, bringing his laptop with him. Isn't that your girlfriend, David? You're not going to chase her. Ashley said without taking his eyes off his laptop screen as she saw our quarrel. I couldn't reply immediately. As I remained silent, Ashley sighed softly. Why did you two argue like that? Well, wasn't that a harsh way to talk about Ashley? You don't know he was a top-notch student with both beauty and brains. Judging him like he's a loser isn't that awful. I felt strangely fled as I was being questioned. I didn't do anything wrong. I just wanted Lily to understand that. I was arguing with her to defend Ashley, but Ashley just stared at me with cold eyes. These were not the calm, bright eyes Ashley had back in our student days. They were unbelievably cold and dark. Do you think I'm happy about what you did? She said, her voice choked with suppressed anger. How can you speak so confidently without knowing anything? That was just for show. Is flaunting your own righteousness a male trait? My homeroom teacher in high school was like that too. It's ridiculous. Ashley began to talk about her past. She pretended to be a straight a student in order to get a scholarship. Apparently, her family fell apart during middle school, and it seemed like Ashley was the one holding the family together. 
of course, going to college was out of the question. Ashley had been aiming for a special scholarship. Considering her grades, she could get a scholarship from any college. She said she wanted to escape from her home as soon as possible. Then she was called by the homeroom teacher who had something to discuss. She was told to give her scholarship spot to another student and take the SAT, which made her doubt her ears. The homeroom teacher was smiling, satisfied with his decision. He didn't even notice Ashley, who was in despair right in front of him. Being forced to take the SAT, Ashley worked harder than ever. But all that effort was in vain, as her family had to run away in the middle of the night due to financial difficulties. There was no way she could take the SAT under such circumstances. Hard work pays off, huh? That's the word of those who were rewarded for their efforts. Ashley ended her story with this line. That's why, David, I get annoyed when I see you. You've been blessed since high school and you shine. Honestly, I didn't want to meet you. She slammed her laptop shut, crumpled up the two checks, and with a thin smile, Ashley left the calf after quickly settling the bill, leaving me dumbfounded and at a loss for words. Listening to Ashley's footsteps, I wondered what I did wrong. The more I thought about it, the more I felt like denying my own life. But that would just make me feel miserable. I downed my cold coffee in one gulp. Ever since running into Ashley on a day off at a cafe, her demeanor became even more businesslike than before. I can tell from her attitude that she wanted to get this job done and cut ties with me as quickly as possible. Even though I was hurt by her attitude, we carried on with our work in a businesslike manner. Mr. Stanley started to accompany her to meetings that she used to attend alone. There was no chance to speak with her one-on-one -on -one anymore. I could tell she was avoiding me completely. Her attitude began to irritate me, and I found it harder to concentrate on my work. To make matters worse, I reached my limit when I saw the two of them getting along so well during meetings. I heard rumors that they'd broken up. But even then, seeing her put complete trust in Mr. Stanley stoked my jealousy, and I couldn't stop it. That's when I made a big mistake. It was a communication error about a system specification change. Distracted by the two of them, I made a beginner's mistake. Even though it was a beginner's mistake, a communication error about a specification changes could be fatal. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the specification changes during our last meeting. I realized my mistake when I was shown the developed system. As soon as I realized it, I broke out in a cold sweat, and my heart began to pound. Mr. Stanley's expression changed quickly when he heard what I said. Even if there's some leeway in the schedule, specification changes are challenging. What do you mean by that, at this late stage? Specification changes now. Mr. Stanley, who has always been calm, raised his voice. I've been watching my team build this up. I guess it's no surprise that the words at this point are slipping out of my mouth. I bowed my head and apologized many times. We still have some leeway in the schedule, so it should be fine. Please let me check the details of the specification changes, I said, trying to control the situation. Mr. Stanley, who had changed color, said in a quiet voice. I think she tried to prevent my mistake from being known to other colleagues. Ashley laughed a little and said, We can do it. In the end, all we got was a reply that the delivery date would be just in time. Ashley said, Don't worry, as she passed me, who couldn't hide my upset at making my first mistake since becoming a working adult. Just before the delivery date, I brought some gifts and went to Ashley's company. The lights were still bright even after work hours. When I rang the doorbell, Mr. Stanley answered. When I handed over the gifts, he smiled happily and said, Thank you, we've received some gifts. When he called out to the company, men with unshaven faces appeared one after another and swarmed around the bag of gifts. I'm truly sorry for the inconvenience, I said, bowing my head. Mr. Stanley said, it's okay, and smiled. Thanks to Ashley's full support, I think we can make it in time. I heard that Ashley, who took on the specification changes, was blamed by other employees when she brought the changes back to the company. There was probably criticism, saying, now you decide to take on such a reckless task. It was Ashley herself who silenced them. She bowed her head and asked for their support, assuring them that she would follow through on everything and take full responsibility. Ashley is a contract worker. She navigates this industry on her own. She hardly ever fawns over others or relies on them, and yet she bowed her head deeply and asked for cooperation. The office quieted down in an instant. Making Ashley beeb like that, 
David, I'd like you to tell me what kind of relationship you and Ashley have. Stanley, still smiling, spoke those words, but his eyes weren't smiling. I was a little taken aback by his serious gaze. Well, I got rejected by Ashley. She told me she had someone she likes since her school days and can't forget him. As he told me this while picking up a sandwich from the catering, I thought my heart was going to stop. Oh, you went to the same school as Ashley, right? Do you know what kind of guy she liked? His teasing made me sit up straighter. I realized he was pushing me forward. She was talking about me. I responded lightly, and Stanley gave me a playful punch in the chest. Pointing to a door in the back, he informed me, she's napping. Hearing his words, I ran to the door at the back. Without knocking, I opened the door to find Ashley sleeping soundly on the couch. The sound of the door closing made her eyelids twitch slightly. Shut up. Ashley's voice was scratchy. She seemed even smaller than when I saw her last time. Ashley, wake up. I have something to ask you. I kneeled down near the couch where Ashley was sleeping. She seemed to wake up all at once when she heard my voice. Jumping up, she looked around wildly. David, pulling her blanket up to her chest, she looked at me, unable to hide her surprise. Stanley told me, Who's this person you can't forget? Her face went white at my words, and she glared at the door, probably glaring at Stanley in the other room. Her face turned red in no time at all. I looked into her eyes and asked again. She just blushed and didn't answer. I heard you were supposed to take the same college entrance exams. The next moment, I felt an impact on my face. It took me a few seconds to realize that she'd thrown a cushion at my face. I've forgotten about such old memories. The sight of a fuming Ashley, her face bright red, is unbearably adorable. Usually, she's full of self-assuredness, but right now, she looks just a little bit younger and flustered. I feel closer to the Ashley I know. That night, I was dumped by Lily. It's your responsibility to pick me up, Ashley. She clicks her tongue, looking at me after my slightly crafty remark. I wait silently for her to speak. Finally, she opens her mouth after the long silence. Ashley's feelings are now completely laid bare. If you were dumped, I guess it can't be helped. If you behave, I'll take you in. I think there must be an unbreakable bond between her and me. If only we had just told each other we loved each other back when we were students. I'm amazed at how far around we've come. From now on, I want to spend my life with her. I want to take my time hearing about her life when I wasn't around. So when's the wedding? I ask Ashley, riding on the wave of excitement. She gives me an exasperated look. For now, make sure you propose properly once the job is done. The moment her expression shifts from exasperation to a full smile, my life changes color completely. I want to promise her a life happier than anyone else in the world. I truly feel it from the bottom of my heart. She gets up from the sofa and returns to her desk, immediately resuming work. I sit next to her, trying to help out as much as I can. There's a bug that keeps occurring here, I explain, pointing at the source code displayed on her computer. Her fingers writing out the code for review hesitate for a moment. What if we do this? Ashley quickly begins to refactor the program. I am in awe of her technique. David, you're pretty talented. It makes it easy to work with you. We're a great team. Looking at the system now running smoothly,